Ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, filmmaker James Fox, executive producer of Out of the Blue. I'd like to welcome everyone here to today's unprecedented event. As we take pause in honoring our country's servicemen on Veterans Day, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the distinguished panelists for traveling here from so far, Iran, Peru, Chile, and the UK. I also want to thank journalist Leslie Kane, the Coalition for Freedom of Information. Without her, this event could not have happened. Her tireless efforts for the last three months were invaluable. Our panelists are about to share with you extraordinary experiences they've had while conducting their duties as high-ranking government, aviation, and military officials. I'm now honored to present our moderator, former Air Force Captain and two-term Arizona Governor, Fife Symington. Well, I'd like to welcome you all uh, here today, and I'd like to go over uh, just uh, the program with you so that you understand how it will unfold. Um, but first, I'd like to thank uh, James Fox for his unbelievable uh, uh, investigative work and research over the past 12 years on this subject. Uh, he has really uh, provided, I think, a great uh, public service uh, in an arena which uh, is met with a great deal of skepticism uh, and um, and, and I just uh, admire his courage, <clears throat> and I've also very much enjoyed his uh, production out of the blue. I think he's done a great job with that. But most importantly today is that he and uh, Leslie Kane are responsible for pulling together this uh, unique panel. I don't think there's ever been a more uh, high-level or distinguished uh, group, uh, authoritative group, that um, uh, has dealt with this matter uh, in, in one conference. And I'm very excited to be a, a small part of it. I would also like to thank uh, Leslie Kane. Again, I'd like to reiterate the fact that, as you know, she's an investigative uh, journalist and director of the Coalition for Freedom of Information. And uh, she has um, done a fabulous job uh, in this arena and also uh, absorbed a lot of the slings and arrows that are out there in the public arena regarding this subject. Um, <clears throat> but she's uh, done it with great uh, fortitude uh, and in, um, I think, uh, very good taste. Uh, I will have, uh, uh, I will make my formal remarks after all the other uh, gentlemen at the, uh, at the table here to my left and right have made their statements. Um, and <clears throat> but I would like to just quickly discuss the media format. Uh, each of us is going to make a statement. We'll come up to the podium, give a two to three minute statement, uh, and then uh, sit down. Uh, we're going to roll through that part of the program so that everybody here can hear uh, all of their testimony. Uh, after that, um, we w I'll stand back up here at the podium and we will open this up for uh, Q&A for credentialed members of the press. If members of the press, when you stand up and ask a question, if you would state your name and your affiliation, that would be uh, very much appreciated. Um, and uh, in my role as the moderator, uh, I guess I also reserve uh, the right to uh, curtail uh, a dialogue that may go on too long or something for the sake of time. We, we want to make sure we, we get to everybody and that all serious questions are, are answered. Uh, I would also like to note that there's a document here uh, in front of you to your, if you're in the audience, to your left, which has been signed um, by uh, all of us, um, which is a request for the United States government to reopen and affect the investigation into the UFO phenomena, which uh, was uh, terminated back in, I believe, 1969, Project Blue Book. And it's a very interesting document, and you should read it. Without further ado, we'll uh, charge ahead with our first speaker, and uh, we're on our way. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Wilfried de Brouwer. I'm a retired Major General of the Belgian Air Force, and I was Chief Operations in the Air Staff at the time that an exceptional UFO wave took place over Belgium. Indeed, uh, during the evening of 29 November 1989, in a small area in eastern Belgium, approximately 140 UFO sightings were reported. Hundreds of people saw a majestic triangle craft with a span of approximately 120 feet, powerful beaming spotlights moving very slowly without making any significant noise, but in several cases accelerating to very high speeds. 
the following days and months, many more sightings would follow. The UFO wave would last more than a year, during which a Belgian UFO organization conducted more than 650 investigations and recorded more than 400 hours of audio witness reports. On one occasion, a photograph revealed the triangular shape and four light beams of the object. I have the photograph here if you want to see more details later on. But at the left, at, at your left, you see the original photograph. At the right, you can see an overexposed photograph which, which reveals the shape of the craft. Belgium had no official focal point for reporting UFO sightings. Uh, nevertheless, in my function of chief operations, I was confronted with numerous questions about the origin and nature of these crafts. In first instance, and in consultation with other NATO partners, I could confirm that no flights of stealth aircraft or any other experimental aircraft took place in the airspace of Belgium. In addition, the civil aviation authorities confirmed that no flight plans had been introduced. This implied that the reported objects or craft committed an infraction against the existing aviation rules. The Belgian Air Force tried to identify the alleged intruders and on three occasions launched F-16 aircraft. On one occasion, two F-16 registered rapid changes in speed and altitude, which were well outside of the performance envelope of existing aircraft. Nevertheless, the pilots could not establish visual context, and the investigation revealed that specific weather conditions may have caused electromagnetic interferences and false radar returns. The technical evidence was insufficient to conclude that abnormal air activities took place during that evening. In short, the Belgian UFO wave was exceptional and the Air Force could not identify the nature, origin and intentions of the reported phenomena. Thank you very much.